to a, another commentary done by Diggity. Each player has a game apiece. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Snipe. Starting as the green Protoss, bottom left-hand corner, we have Mighty as the red Terran. I believe this is on Polypoid. And this is going to be a late-night cast on, yeah, Twitch TV. If you guys have not watched it live thus far, typically, okay, I know my schedule is a little bizarre during the week. But uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, for the uh, usually 9.30ish, 9.40ish on Tuesdays, a little bit later on Tuesdays, because I have obligations prior to that, but a little bit, usually pretty early on Thursdays, and this is all uh, Pacific Standard Time to cast live to a Twitch audience if you want to join there. But as far as like the regular nighttime casts that happen otherwise, that tends to be a little bit more random. This is a regular nighttime cast. Sorry if people were watching and trying to keep up on the Twitch stream and uh, stay alive as far as like what's exactly happening on YouTube, not on YouTube. By the way, an SCV just wandering out. Are we going to see... No, okay, he's going to do that front door blockade with the... I actually saw this, I think it was two matches ago, where he even left a little bit of a gap. And I'm curious if he's going to do that again. Single pylon in the base for snipe. But anyway, as far as like when I'm doing nightly casts, otherwise it's a little bit more random. Mostly because oftentimes I have like dryers or dishwashers or other things going off in the background. And it's not always optimal conditions to cast. And I'm not streaming absolutely every night. Barracks planting on front. And is this, I think it is again with a small gap. I feel like this is a little bit risky against any sort of zealot opener. Unless, well, I guess it depends. It depends, because you can still put that supply depot down and get that blockade on the front door. But usually you'll have people leave their front door a little bit more wide open. Or if they're building a wall, they'll build it on the front. It's interesting to see this from Mighty. Plopping that refinery down. It almost directly lends itself to single base into kind of factory into expand. Or any some sort of timing rush and denying information from there. So I kind of like it in that regard. These probes getting a little bit stuck on the assimilator. Not quite going in just yet. Cybernetics core warping in, and this is unfortunate. Okay, now they're getting in for snipe. Wondering if there's a bit of lag in this match. Pylon plopping down as well. Cybernetics core about halfway finished. He's not producing initial zealot. Very likely because he doesn't have a lot of scouting information. He's still not sent a scout out. Mighty is scouting clockwise, so will unfortunately come across his opponent last. And snipe, yeah, still not sending out a scout. So I'm almost wondering if he's just going to go straight gateway play. Or something along those, uh, along those lines. N just, yeah, this is very... I feel like this is a late scout. Usually you see it after Gateway. Usually not after Cybernetics Core. But, luckily for him, he is scouting directly towards Mighty's base. Mighty not producing a Marine just yet. And hasn't sealed his front door just yet. Again, playing very... Honestly, if there was like a proxy in the middle, I don't know how he would have defended that. Not sure though. Anyway, Factory... Very close to finished. First Dragoon's produced and actually might, if he gets a move on, might be able to block this front door and deny Mighty a lot of information. I think he needs to slide this a little bit to the right. I think Mighty backing off. Actually, I think that might be a pathing issue. SCV attacking the Supply Depot. First Marine being produced. And we do see a Machine Shop being plopped down. No second Machine Shop for Mighty. So again, yeah, I think we might be seeing just one base, two more SCV. And he did have one SCV pulled off gas to go ahead and get this command center plopped down. So yeah, we're seeing that one base factory into expand play. I'm not sure if this was a miss rally. So basically it was trying to go into the base. The path was blocked. It realized the path was blocked and then ended up scooting out some opposite direction for Mighty. Or if it was just a misclick on his part and the SCV ended up in no man's land. But either way, he is ending up with not a lot of information on what's going on for Snipe. And he might be a little bit... I, I'm almost curious if he's as puzzled as we are, as far as what's happening there. Two Dragoons planted on the front door to try to deny information. I don't think it's going to be able to kill that SCV before it sees that Nexus, if Mighty suicides that in. And that probe doing all sorts of work on that supply depot. Wow, got a lot, of, significant amount of damage done before it took a little bit of damage from that Marine and backed off. Dragoons being a little bit lazy. And they are, in fact, going to allow that SCV to see that Nexus warping in but not providing any additional information otherwise. We do see the robotics facility building alongside, uh, be building alongside and also weapons range just finishing. Another gateway popping down. So I think they're gonna be plenty of mines. And so both players going for more of an economic passive opening. Siege tech is upgrading. First siege tech is done. Mighty is going to be well secure because Snipe is not even being aggressive right here. 
And usually I feel like this kind of puts things in the Protoss's corner here. Because almost, I don't know. <laughs> I love this. Single pro blockade. Oh, that pro got decimated. Thought it was being clever for a second and then exploded. I like to see Chenk blocking the ramp as well, just in case there's something else sneaky trying to push forward. And now Mighty going to go ahead and plop down an engineering bay. Interesting. There's actually a cool map you can find online. I'll see if I can find the link. If you go to CPL, they'll probably have the link for you immediately. But it will show you the different like lengths in pixels and whatnot. And you can kind of do like an additive thing to see exactly what seals and what doesn't. Interestingly enough, I want to throw that out there for people trying to learn the game. Three gateways down, three additional Dragoons being produced. And I think that Snipe is positioning to kind of be a little bit more... Basically, his goal here is to have a large enough army to be able to harass and delay Mighty if he's opting to go ahead and take a third. Wants to get Vision inside Mighty's base. Mighty actually has not even plopped down a second factory yet. Has grabbed a second, uh, second refinery. But yeah, as I was going to say, usually when you see this kind of two base play, what Terran are often opting to do these days is going for that level 2, level 1, level 2 weapons, level 1 armor upgrade at about the, I don't know, 12 minute, 13 minute mark sometimes, depending on how well they execute it. In Chobo League, there's a lot of variants, um, mostly because you have some extremely skilled players in Chobo League, and then you have some other players that, I don't know, they, they're very good at aggressive early game and tend to flounder a little bit more when it comes to more mid game or late game play. And actually, I'll be honest, I kind of prefer it that way because you end up with more interesting things. Snipe going ahead and grabbing a quick third. So ignore what I said. So paused gateway production once he felt like he had a solid enough army to deal with anything that Mighty was pushing out here. And actually did that before he got good eyes inside of Mighty's base. Mighty plopping down three additional factories. And we do see that first army getting that level one weapons. And I also want to point out that critically here, yeah, we have the engineering bay. Yeah, we have combat stations, but there might have been a window for Dark Templar in here. Fortunately for Mighty, he is not going up against Dark Templar. Maybe on the scan a little bit earlier, he realized with the tech he caught, he didn't need to worry about it. Citadel of Adun has been planted and is about halfway finished. I assume that Snipe is... I feel like Snipe's actually in a pretty good position taking his third right here to do... Because this is almost like an arms race, right? This is where the units start getting produced... For that weapons upgrade and actually this is this is where my starcraft knowledge lacks a little bit as to know whether this is kind of the early earlier okay we're going to go on weapons one up and i, I assume that's not the case because weapons one is just a few moments off with a couple of vultures or whether it's a delay and wait until and usually you'll see a second armory at some point and i need to pay better attention as to when that's happening to advance my own starcraft knowledge I think we are, in fact, going to go for that two level two weapons, level one armor, because we see the starport already planted and nothing planted alongside it with the Terran Science Facility. And I believe that is to, yeah, be able to kick up that level two weapons upgrade uh, sooner rather than later. But critically, what we'll see is a few additional machine shops planted down and usually a handful, usually three or four more factories to produce vultures with support. Critically... Mighty has, as far as I have seen, has not upgraded spider mines, has not upgraded speed. So I think he's definitely relying very heavily on that timing attack. That he can exit, and he's trying to push, I think, that timing a little bit forward. He's about even in supply, which is where you want to be. Well, a little bit behind after that last queuing of units. But he's not so far behind in supply that he's at a disadvantage. Snipe actually grabbing a fourth Nexus. I think that was spotted by that SCV at the 3 o'clock location. And also grabbing a cannon right here. And this is kind of that... This is the scary town territory. Because, yeah, here's the additional three factories. I'm waiting for additional machine shops as well. There's level 1 armor and level 2 weapons on the way. I missed the uh, second armory being placed down. Now, here's the question on snipe side. And this is where Protoss at this level... Just, honestly, Protoss at every single level. You'll even see it when Artosis is playing, going up against this particular build, Protoss need to have a sufficient army, sufficient tech, or both in order to combat this specific timing attack. And the thing is, is those mech units, they are heavy hitting and in large numbers when they press out. You can see there's already a large number of siege tanks 
and this is going to be four factories to back that up. Critically, not a lot of machine shops plopping down to follow this up, so it's going to be a little bit lighter on the tank reinforcement, but there's going to be all, so all sorts of vultures following this up. And interestingly enough, a covert ops, and we saw this in game one from Mighty, a covert ops with a ghost and lockdown. Let's see if I can find the... Uh, I assume lockdown will be researched. And that's to combat Arbiter Tech. It was very successful for him in game one. We do see High Templar Psystorm being upgraded for Snipe, so I think he's going to rely more on Psystorm rather than Arbiter Cloaking here in this match. He does have a shuttle with a couple Zealots in it. No shuttle speed. Keep in mind, Lockdown just as good against shuttles. And I'm a little concerned for Snipe, mostly because when I look at the composition of his army, it is a handful of Zealots, mostly Dragoons. He's going Gateway Man, effectively. He's got eight gateways currently built, but that's going up against effectively seven factories. Mine's now being upgraded. Level one weapons, level, sorry, level two weapons, level one armor just about finished. So Mighty is gathering up to go ahead and move out. The Ghost is not going to be a large factor here. It might be able to lock down one Dragoon, but I don't see any High Templar out in the field. Just two Zealots, or sorry, two shuttles worth of Zealots. To perhaps combat this. The Observer sees everything. Mighty positioning over this mineral only. This is oftentimes a difficult situation in this map is if you're just going for a more of a macro oriented build is holding that third. Oftentimes Protoss will try to dive on it but I think Mighty is just going to go for the kill here rather than trying to gather up and look at so many units they're having trouble maintaining their position here on the map. No up what wow. Also, no weapon upgrades here for Snipe. He is at 175 supply. So slightly ahead in the supply overall. Observer's gonna get taken out overhead. And here comes, yeah, that Doom March. And unfortunately, he's he's setting up this grouping up here, perhaps for a pincer attack. The vultures right there. High Templar not with enough energy to storm just yet, and might get picked off by these vultures on the low ground. Now engaging. Tanks kind of sieging at a staggered position. Good lockdown on that shuttle, still with four zealots inside. This is a very spread out fight. You can see all of those Dragoons just melting from up above, and honestly, Mighty, with his spread, just engaging this kind of accidentally perfectly, I feel like. The shuttle getting taken out overhead, and he still has a gigantic standing army, and Snipe, his supply just got obliterated. Vultures just meandering. They don't even have speed walking straight in. A couple Dark Templar have been produced. I think that Science Vessel is still around here someplace, though. So they're not long for life. And honestly, Mighty is... Ha I think that might be GG. Mighty is happy to trade Vultures for a handful of DTs with some timing delay. A couple more Dragoons not even bothering to Siege to clean that up. And yeah, I gotta see Snipe GGing here not too long from now. Just such a powerful weapon in Mighty's arsenal these days. And honestly, if I, I'm going to recommend that if you are... Ooh, good size storm over the, the head area there. But honestly, this these bases are not long for life. And this is a completely sealed in Protoss. Maybe if Snipe was able to do some sort of Arbiter recall, something along those lines. Also, level 3 weapons, level 2 armor on the way. Still no sort of weapon upgrade for Snipe comparatively. So first of all, I think it's difficult for Protoss to recognize precisely what they're up against. Second of all, yeah, just catching that razor-thin margin where you have the sufficient army to combat it and also having the skill to deal with the rolling mech army is just very, very difficult. So I, I'm going to recommend that if you are picking up Terran, talk to Mighty, talk to these guys out in the CPL Discord, or look at some of these replays, look at what they did, copy it, and execute it on your own. It's very successful. I think it is what Shamtu did almost exclusively and had a lot of success with against his Protoss opponents. This is enough Zealots. Ooh, nice defense matrix on that low ground tank. Mines dragging into that tank as well. The Zealots trying to desperately rescue this Nexus. They should be able to, honestly. Science Vessel should be able to sneak out with this life if it is headed up enough to do so. This is two tanks on the high ground. Actually, I take it back. The rest of the unit's not going to survive. This is where the lack of machine shops... Okay, sorry, never mind. Three machine shops have been plopped down. A lot of vultures moving their way across the map. I don't think they're going to be in... Well, I take it back. If they had targeted the other tank, might have gotten a free tank kill. Not a free, but a tank kill. 
Instead, the Vulture is able to provide enough timing and defense that it might disrupt the rest of these Zealots making their way across. And it's going to be close. Okay, one tank down. This is going to... Oof. The Vulture is pounding away at this. 30 health, and it's gone. And Snipe trying to rebuild his natural expansion. Oof. So you got three base Terran. Because while all that was happening, Mighty went ahead and t uh, he took his natural expansion. Or sorry, his, his third with the mineral only. And now we have Snipe, who is very thin at his main. And might have to distance mine here in a second. Has very few units. Very, very, very few units to speak of. EMP also being <laughs> upgraded for Mighty. Not sure that Ghost has done a lot of work, but... I think it's it's fun to see it in these matches. That's another reason I like Chobo League, is because you kind of see interesting stuff like that. A little bit of variation. Speaking of High Templar and EMPs and whatnot, these High Templar are getting caught. Side storming the Vultures, but also catching a little bit of that Dragoon. And this is this is Minerals. Wow, still able to sneak in and get a probe kill. Oh, another probe kill. Hard to see on the mini-map, right? Well, hard to see on the visual map because of the UI feature. Mighty can just rebuild out of everything he's got. He's plopping down some additional factories. And just do another push and he should win. Because, yeah, this is distance mining happening for Snipe at his natural. He is practically out of a bank. All Mighty has to do is spend the resources he has. Scythe storming a handful of vultures right there. Zealots running a little bit forward. Another High Templar getting picked off, which is exactly what you want to do as Terran pick off those units that can send down the thunder from the sky. Vulture's trying to sneak by. Going to catch another High Templar, so that's more gas being lost for Snipe. Snipe having to rely, uh, rely on gas-heavier units because, again, just low on probes overall, and more probes getting decimated at, well, getting annihilated. And again, with the distance mining, I, oof, down to 29 probes. Trying to dive in at this mineral only, but the siege tank's reading with gigantic explosive arms almost yeah there's gg from snipe and mighty yeah putting on a terran clinic versus protoss hope you guys enjoyed it mighty going up two games to one over snipe we will sneak into game four hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for listening